Hi everyone and welcome to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. Apologies for the lateness of the hour with this video but I was holding off for this little bad boy and as some of you know my meal person doesn't come till much later on in the day. So I'm not going to spend too much time rambling for a change, we're just going to go to top down view and we can see what surprises are in store in this month's scroller box. Let's get going. Okay so for those of you that are new here, the Scroller box is the only UK based art subscription box whereby you pay them some pennies every month and they send you out a surprise box of goodies for you to play with. They also provide a, an art prompt and it's called the Scroller Challenge and the idea is to only use the supplies in the box to create a piece of artwork fitting with the prompt. So let's see what we've got. Oh, I see lots of colour. How very exciting. So every month you get a featured artist. You're not learning every day, then you're not living every day. Oh, if you're not learning every day. You're not living. I agree with this. I'm a person that loves to learn. There's so many colours, so this is quite encouraging. So our featured artist is Kiki B. And there are details of the um, the social media account attached to this person. Kiki B is an American artist and illustrator living in the Netherlands. And that is quite interesting indeed. So that is our featured artist to give some inspiration. Also, they usually provide us with some sort of paper. I can see here it's, um, it's quite smooth paper this time. How many sheets have we got? Two sheets. And it's also quite thick as well. On to the supplies. I like it when everything stays all nice and wrapped up like this. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have our card here that tells us about everything in the box, which we won't look at just yet. That's also got our prompt on it for our scroller challenge. We also get a sticker every month as well, which is, oh, oh that's quite fancy, isn't it? Oh, I think this might be markers or some kind of pens. And we also get every month a, a sweet as well which this time is a fruit salad. These are one of my favourites. These are awesome. If uh, anybody that's anywhere else in the world doesn't get fruit salads, then you're gonna love this. It's really good. Okay, ooh. We have a graphite writing pencil in HB. I don't know how many HB pencils I've got. And uh, it is a Viking HB pencil. We have a Faber-Castell art eraser. This feels a bit like a kneaded eraser. You can see I'm squashing it there and it's um, holding the shape that I have squished it into. So that's good. I do like a good kneaded eraser. So we have pencils, erasers and the, the ever-present fine liner. Uni pin fine liner water and fade proof recap after use it says on it so we know that it might not be it might dry out quite quickly and is a 0 0.5 in light it says light grey so I wonder if it is light grey let's have a look at the nib that's quite a chunky nib that's chunkier than I would use for for outlining things but it's not massive so we can test that out as well oh we have another one and this is a 0 0.1, this is more my bag. And I think this one might be black. Oh no, this is dark grey. So we have dark grey and light grey. That may be good for doing some shadow effects. Oh yeah, that's much better. That's more like it. That's more my kind of thing. I like quite a, a fine, fine liner. Ooh. Ecoline pastel brush pens. Now this is exciting. These look really, really good quality. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I just want to take these out and have a, a look at them. They feel quite heavy in the packet. I am especially excited about pastel colours because I like pastel colours. Yeah, they're they're quite they're quite hefty. So we have grey, rose, violet, blue, and green. So we've got a really nice selection of colours there, and they are very delicate. They are rather nice. So let's have a look at the tips on these. Looks like a brush pen to me. And you know the test of these is that they have to be put through their paces rigorously, <laughs> which we'll get on to. Okay, so I think that is us. Yes, that is us. So I'm just gonna shovel this out the road and we can start testing these materials out in the ye old trusty test book. And we'll have a look at the descriptions as well and see what's what. First of all, the prompt is words of wisdom. So they are going for a sort of lettering type theme this month. Now whether or not you actually take that literally and do some lettering or whether you draw something that resembles a particular phrase or sage words that you live your life by, that gives quite a lot of scope for things to do for the, the scroller challenge which is quite nice. 
So let's get cracking. So first things first, as per, we have a, an HB pencil, which is uh, is nothing to get excited about really. <laughs> I have lots of these. It writes well, it doesn't feel like a particularly cheap pencil and I do have a thing about uh, cheap feeling art supplies, even if they're not necessarily cheap. It's going down fine. This is just cartridge paper and that seems to be the, the order of the day, so that's fine. Let's see what it says about it. A new modern classic, is there such a thing? <laughs> Is there such a thing as a modern classic when it comes to an HB pencil? It is made in Denmark. Uh, a beautifully simple matte black barrel. Uh, yeah, okay. I think they're I think they're trying to big this up a little bit too much. Okay, we have the Kneadable Artists Eraser. And th these, I like these because they work with a lot of things. You can use these on different mediums. They don't just work with pencil and it's just to lift up some of the pigment or the colour. And they're quite, they're quite good as well because they don't leave any dust. You don't have to scrub away. I'm going to try and take this out of the packet. You don't have to scrub away to erase. Use the knife gem, that would be easier. Wow, I'm struggling with this. Oh, it's wrapped in, it's got plastic in the plastic. Well, that's just not very helpful. So let's see how well this does. It does feel quite sticky for a kneaded eraser, but I kind of like that. It will lose its stickiness over time. And I can tell you that this is whiffy. Oh, that smells horrendous. It smells really um, chemically. Anyway, let's see how we do. So we have the dab motion. And that's picking up that graphite beautifully. And let's see what happens if we do a bit of rubbing. Again, I'll do it in one of these darker spots. Yeah, that's picking up quite a lot of it. I wouldn't say it's spectacular. My only other, not even, I can't even call it a complaint, because this is a white kneadable eraser, it's going to get grubby really, really quickly as it picks up the graphite. The one that I have currently is kind of like a dark blue colour. Now, it's good in the sense that it doesn't look as grubby, but the downside to that is, at least with the white one, you know when the kneaded eraser is starting to get saturated with the graphite and you know when to change it. Because if you don't, what happens is when you start to lift graphite, when it gets to that point, you end up making more of a mess on the paper than, you know, you put down more than you're lifting off. So I would say that's probably an advantage of having a white kneaded eraser, but it's just going to look really grubby really quickly. So yeah, I'm reasonably impressed with that. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's spectacular, but it's, it's taking the graphite away fine. I mean, there's like, there's hardly anything left there at all. So uh, yes, the, the kneaded eraser is definitely getting a thumbs up. Now let's try these fine liners. Now I have used light grey fine liners before and I found them to be a bit of a waste of time, to be perfectly honest. They tend to just sort of, you know, fade away into nothing. So this is the 0 0.5. And it's it's not that pale. And the ink flow feels okay. Let's do a bit of scrubbing and see what happens. Yeah, that's quite consistent, that's nice. Let's see what happens when we press harder. Okay, so you can get a little bit of line variation there. That was just very light strokes and there's uh, me leaning a little bit heavier. One of the things I like to use fine liners for is hatching and cross hatching. So it's something that I always like to test out. Some squiggly lines as well is always a good one, just to make sure that the ink's coming out no matter what direction you're, you know, you're moving the pen in. But that's that seems to be okay, and the pale grey it isn't too pale uh, that it's going to, you know, disappear in the picture. Hopefully, she says. <laughs> okay, so let's try out the dark grey. This is the zero point one. There doesn't seem to be much of a difference between the dark grey and the pale grey, but it's probably because the nib size is smaller, so you're not getting that large saturation of ink in the same area as the other one. And as I suspected, when you do a scrubbing motion, this feels a lot scratchier, and it's actually no reflection on the quality of the pen. It's just because of the nib size. You'll find that with most fine liners. And uh, if they make them any juicier, they become uncontrollable when you're trying to do very fine details like this so it is a bit of a balancing act but I would say that this is this is pretty good 
I like it. I just wish it was a tiny little bit darker. But the pens themselves, they're they're very they're a very solid build quality. It feels nice in my hand. I like the barrel. So I would say this is probably one of the fine liners that I'm slightly more um excited about, shall we say. So let's have a little look to see if it says anything else of any excitement. Um okay, dark grey, fine, blah blah. Waterproof, fade proof pigment ink. Okay, so if you want to display works of art on the wall, then that's okay for using for that. The black ink pens are the most popular but Uni have recently expanded their range to include more pens so you can exper experiment. So you can experiment with how these colours and different line widths can add something a little more subtle to your work than the standard black. So that might be quite interesting to look up and see what other colours they come in. So lastly and much more excitingly let's get cracked in with these Eco line pens and let's see what it says about these. Okay, so it is liquid watercolour. I was wondering whether they were going to be alcohol based or water based. And it's transparent liquid watercolour ink. It has a shorter drying time than other watercolours and is beautifully vivid beautifully vivid. The bright ink lends itself to blending and mixing extremely well. Simply add water to the colour to mix and blend. Okay, so it is not very light fast. So Ecoline advise keeping your finish work protected in a portfolio. Okay, so that's a major downside straight away. But let's have a go. See, I, I like the heft in these, they, they feel pretty good. So here we go. Mmm, interesting. So that's, uh, that is just one quick sweep. Now I want to see first of all what they're going to be like once they dry and then to be able to put a couple of layers on to see if it intensifies the colours. So that's the kind of lilac colour, uh, violet they're calling it. I've got the pink one here. They are quite delicate looking. They do look more washed out on the camera than they are to the naked eye. The, the green is much more vibrant than that. Um, I will say that because I don't want to mislead anyone. And here is the blue. Oh, the blue is quite pretty as well. I like that. That's nice. And then we have the grey. Okay. Now, interestingly, the grey is completely different to our fine liners as well. So again, the, the, neither the fine liners or this grey brush pen are going to disappear when we're actually going to create a piece of art with them. Okay, let's see how... Okay, they do, they do dry quickly, wow. So let's try and do a second layer. And I'm only gonna do this on half of this, just to see. Uh, you can see that that's starting to pull up the paper just by putting a second layer on, but that could be more to do with the paper. I think the paper that has come in the scroller box will be more suited to these pens than this cartridge paper. So let's just see what this does. Okay, so the vibrancy is increasing with the layers, like the number of layers of the pen that you put down. So that's kind of good to know as well. I imagine if you kept layering the grey, you could get that quite deep and quite rich eventually. So we know that we can layer them. Now they were talking about mixing and blending. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a water brush. Okay, so I've got quite a, quite a large tipped water brush here. I'll just make sure that it's clean before I start making a mess with things. So let, let's do something that's quite sort of traditional and obvious. If I do this, but see I'm concerned about how quickly these dry, that is my only, my only concern in amongst this, because ideally you would want to do this while it's still wet. There we go. Let's see if we can pull this over into, mm, it's definitely moving the the ink about. If I do it around the edge there, you can see that it is it is softening out that edge. In terms of blending them together, mm, I don't know, a little bit maybe. All it seems to do is leaving a, a light patch in the middle, but now I have wet the paper. Let's see what happens if we do this. It's just pilling up the paper, okay. Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, oh, okay. So I wonder what happens if we layer this. Let's do this. And then put some blue over the top of it while it's still reasonably wet. I think in all honesty that you would need to do this on watercolour paper, if I'm being brutally honest. 
that has given quite an interesting shade though if i just show you there's the original green and the original blue so that's given us a much more vibrant color i think what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to grab uh, a little bit of watercolor paper and we can go to town a bit more with these on that okay i've got a couple of scraps here so let's try it on this now i did note that this paper i'm going to have a little read and see what it says about the paper that comes in the box it says nothing about the paper that comes in the box oh that's not helpful at all no there's i'm just checking because sometimes they pop it right down at the bottom but yeah it doesn't say anything about the paper so the paper that came in the box i would say it looks it looks to me like cheap watercolor paper but that is just me going by eye and the reason that i say that is is i own some really cheap watercolor paper that isn't very good and it looks uh, quite similar to this anyway let's try on this other cheap watercolor paper so let's just go back and do what we did again so there's there's some blue which we'll bring out all the way across why not why not it's thursday and let's see what happens we put a little bit of pink on there okay that is still tearing up the paper and then if i go over this with my water brush oh i've still got some ink on it from from the previous effort okay that's kind of given us like a violet color which i expected um i don't know where to rub this off i'll do it in, the, do it in this one that's still pulling up the paper that worries me that worries me quite considerably we'll put this bit of green on again yeah so that's given us like a more vibrant green this this looks as if it's gone a kind of sort of dirty version of the violet anyway so let's try let's just try and pull this out when it's on the paper yeah that's not really doing anything either this stuff dries far too quickly for this i think what we're gonna have to do with this realistically is that we are going to have to go like old school paint palette i'm not imp i'm not impressed with this at all i see this is on watercolor paper as well which even if i cross them over And it's just, it's just kind of taken over. I'm really reluctant to move over to the paper that came in the scroller box until I've got this, this figured out. I'm not, I'm not happy about what it's doing to the paper, which is making me think that we might have to go and get a palette and um, a paintbrush. Okay, so I'm just going to pop this off to the side here. I've got an, an, a little fresh scrap. I always keep these scraps of watercolour paper. I just, I've got a thing about it. Right, so what I'm thinking now is kind of the way that you could do is this, squish it in. This is a porcelain or ceramic mixing palette I've got. But if you have to do this, it kind of defeats the purpose of having these lovely brush nibs. I say I'm just experimenting here. I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way to do this. I'm sure some of you have got much better ideas about what I should be doing here. But we like to explore all the avenues. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to plonk a little bit of water into each of these. And uh, give it a mix. See, that just seems to water things right down. I mean, that, that has like peeled that. You can't even see that on the camera. So even doing it this way is not... Oh, the green's slightly better. I don't know. I just, I'm not convinced about this at all. And I hate it when this happens because I feel as if I'm being stupid and I'm missing something. So let's see what happens if I suck all this up and then stick it in there. See, now that's made quite an interesting colour if you just see that on that side of the screen. And that's going back to more what we did on the original tester page. It's just, I mean, I, that is one drop of water. I used a pipette to do that and the colour is so delicate and it, it negates the sort of fast drying properties and the use of the brush nib on the actual pens. So I, I think the only thing left now really is to try it on the paper that I've provided in the box and hope that that might fare a little better. So let's see how we go. And again, I don't know if there's a right side and a wrong side. I'm having a look at the, you know, the tooth of the paper and the grain of the paper and the light. And I think that both sides are the same. So I'm just going to use one as a tester sheet and we can try again and see what's what. So I'm just, I'm really at a loss here. Like I really am. And I hate this when this happens because it makes me feel inadequate. So here's blue. 
Now that's going down lovely on that paper. I will say that straight off. So if I take my water brush over this, it's still not, and I've literally just put that on straight after, and it's not moving the colour about all that much. I mean, I'm having to scrub at it, and obviously I'm damaging the tooth of the paper as I do that. To be able to blend out a colour with, with which you can do with some other water-based pens. In fact, the Karen markers that came in the scroller box not that long ago are amazing for that. Um, but these aren't really... It's as if they're contradicting themselves because on one hand they're quick drying, but on the other hand they're like, oh, you can blend them and mix them. I'm going to try this again. They do, they do go down nicely on this paper, though, I will say that. So that's kind of bled into that a little bit. So if I do this now, surely I should be able to. Can you can you guys see? I mean, you can see that. I'm gonna zoom in a bit more. I'm I'm like I'm not kidding you on. Honestly, look. All that's done is brought up the grain of the paper, which you can see now sticks out like a sore thumb. It's not. It's just not doing anything. It's not. It's not doing anything. It, it, it's 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 not. I don't really know what to do here. <laughs> Adding water seems to have little or no effect. Now I can see that that's really wet on the paper, so I'm gonna go straight in there and chuck down some green on top of that. And again, it's pilling the paper. I wonder what happens if we wait until it's dry. So let's put some green down. And wait. Can you see the grain of the paper coming up through? And then we've got this gray color as well. Now see my, my water brush has picked up a little bit of the pink from before. So maybe if I wet this now and wet the paper, you know, kind of like you would do with a with a watercolour wash, and maybe I can pop the the pink down. Now see all that's done is washing out the colour that's already there. Alright guys, I um I don't really know what to say about about this box. I can't really think of any other method of applying water that's going to be any less intrusive, any quicker or any more effective. Um, adding it to a palette, does all it does is wash the colours out. You can mix them, but it's going to give you a really... Um, you know, a really sort of desaturated version of whatever colour you've mixed, which, you know, that's what happened with this green. And I think you would use to have to use an awful lot of ink in these markers in order to get any sort of depth of colour. So that seems a bit of a shame. Layering them directly on top of each other is, you know, is pretty mixed. I mean, look how rough that looks. It's, it's almost dry, but it, that's horrendous. That's just not cool. Adding water directly onto it, even when it's wet or dry, seems to have little or no effect. And blending the markers over each other, doesn't matter whether you add water before or after, they're not really blending in together. So I don't know whether I am missing something or I'm, I'm just not getting the gist of the idea behind these. But to me, these markers, in terms of their water solubility properties, are it's to the detriment of the colours that are there, which is a shame. The markers on their own and used for the purpose that the, the featured artist has gone for. Clearly, they didn't have the same markers as us because look at those colours, baby. We're going to get anything like that. I think on their own, purely as lettering tools, I think they would be quite, quite nice because you could get some really nice, fancy sort of brush scripty type lettering but that's all very well if you're into lettering if you're not i think their properties are sorely lacking yeah i have to concentrate to this i can't talk and do this at the same time oh messed that up <laughs> can you tell i am not a hand letter i'm trying hello color cavers <laughs> Uh, I think we may just have to go with the hand lettering. See, when I'm pressing down really hard, I'm really smooshing that, that brush tip in and it gave me this massive punt of colour just in this one section. And even that soaking into this paper is terrible. It is awful. Um, 
so if you put too much ink down you're going back to this horrible sort of grainy effect which is nobody wants that i mean look it's all coming up here as well honestly guys um i'm at a loss please 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 leave me a comment underneath and let me know what you think my sort of final opinion on this box is that if you're going to use it for lettering that's probably your best bet in terms of blending and mixing you're probably um not going to get you know any sort of majorly stunning results unless we magically find a different type of water that works the paper in the box isn't ideal either it doesn't seem to be coping very well and it started to buckle there where i've put the water on it um you can just see the bend in the paper here and no more i don't know what i'm going to do with this prompt either i think i probably will go for something in the hand lettering front and take it from there uh, i keep i keep picking things up again i'm like we'll go back we'll do we'll do something with it now it'll work this time even trying to lift some of the paint off it's not it's not doing anything and this paper is making it horrible horrible and hard work it really is all right then so let's have a recap of what came in the box just when i'm putting these pens away um i was reading on the back here and it says apparently that there's a blender uh, a blender available to make the colors lighter well i think that's been half our problem is that they're that light they're disappearing so i don't know if i'd want one of them either <laughs> Okay, so in this month's scroller box, we have our featured artist with some beautiful hand lettering. I'm going to pin this up on the wall because this is me. This this is my entire life, this saying. And that is by Kiki B. So you can check out her Instagram if you are into that and you want to see more of her work. We have a rather funky scroller box sticker, which I really like this month. And uh, we also have our sweet, whatever it's disappeared to. Oh no, I think I've lost the fruit salad. Oh no, there it is. We have our sweet. And our list of all of our supplies as well as this month's scroller challenge, which is Words of Wisdom. And we have the HB Pencil, Common or Garden HB Pencil, which is absolutely fine and dandy. The Faber-Castell Kneaded Eraser, which I have to say I think is probably my favourite item in this month's box, but I do have a thing about kneaded erasers. We have the two uni pin fine liners in the pale and the dark grey. And I have to say it's really difficult to get excited about fine liners when you have been subscribed to Scroller Box as long as I have. I have fine liners coming out my ears, but these feel really nice and they're a good solid product and they feel really really good quality i have a feeling that the nib quality in these is going to be pretty robust as well so i you know i have a feeling that they're going to last for a long time and they'll take quite a quite a bit of abuse before they'll they'll start to fray or push into to the nib so I'm, I'm really pleased with these i really like these and i think i'm going to use these going forward after i've done the scroller challenge Lastly in this box we have these very puzzling um, eco line brush pens that are supposed to be like watercolour ink and uh, other than using them as they are I can't seem to get them to do what what they're supposed to do i would appreciate any comments on that if you guys have these or have tried them maybe you've got your scroller box too but i just can't see them being useful for anything other than lettering on on their own and that is it for the April box. Let me know what you think of this month's box in the comments. You know I'm always interested in what other people have an opinion on when it comes to these monthly boxes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and coming to see what is in this month's box. I hope this has given you an indication of what not to do with these pens. <laughs> and we shall see you soon back in the cave for another video. Have a good day everyone. Bye for now.